Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, recently I provided a benchmark video comparing the GeForce RTX 3070 and Radeon RX 6800 head to head in a huge range of games. And since then, I have had a lot of you request that I do the same with the RTX 3080 and 6800 XT. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Again, in a long list of games covering the 1080p, 1440p and 4K resolutions. But before we get to any of that, Experience ultimate performance and get pixel perfect detail with the new MSI Optics MAG274 QRF QD monitor. Raise hell in game and soak in a blazing fast 165Hz refresh rate, stunningly quick rapid IPS panel with unrivaled color reproduction that topped our own gaming monitor charts here at Hardware Unboxed, all backed with NVIDIA G Sync compatibility right out of the box. Offering 1440p resolution at 27 inches in size, MSI really has set a new standard for enthusiast gaming monitors. If a gaming monitor could be described as coming close to perfect, this would be it. So learn more about MSI's new Optics MAG274 QRF QD monitor via the links below. Okay, so quick disclaimer we know that availability for both products is beyond terrible right now, especially the Radeon GPU, which is almost non existent based on what I'm hearing from retailers. The AMP GPUs are coming in slowly, but supply is nowhere near where it needs to be, so the shortages will continue for the foreseeable. Still, there is a chance if you're patient enough, you will be able to get your hands on one of these GPUs, and of course, we're praying availability improves soon. Surely, at some point, the situation will improve. And when it does, this video will help you answer the question, which one should you buy? So with that, let's go over the system specs and then jump into the benchmark data. Now, please note for this video, I'm using my updated GPU test rig, which uses the Ryzen 9 5950X. So not the 3950X, the newer 5950X. Though I am sticking with the same memory configuration, which sees me use dual rank, dual channel DDR4-3200CL14 memory. Finally, technologies such as SAM, so Smart Access Memory, they've been disabled, and this is always the case unless specified otherwise. Representing the GeForce GPU is the RTX 3080 Found Edition graphics card, while the Radeon GPU will be represented by AMD's reference card. Both are stock, so no overclocking here. Now, I'm not going to go over all 30 graphs here. We'll individually take a look at around a dozen of the games tested, and then I'll jump into some breakdown graphs to quickly summarize all the data. Please note, all graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with Battlefield 5, we see that the Radeon GPUs have a significant performance advantage in this title. So much so that the RX 6800 is able to beat the RTX 3080 at 1080p and 1440p. That meant at 1440p, the 6800 XT was 20% faster than the RTX 3080. That's a massive performance difference given they occupy a similar price point, or at least they're meant to. However, the Ampere architecture does scale better at 4K, or at least the higher core count parts like the RTX 3080 do. This isn't so much a memory bandwidth issue for the RDNA 2 GPUs as people often claim, rather it's a case of the 3080 coming to life at this high resolution. Still, whatever you believe the reason to be, the fact remains that the RTX 3080 often performs better at 4K, and here we're seeing it come from 17% behind the 6800 XT at 1440p to 6% faster at 4K. Not a huge difference in this title admittedly, but the GeForce GPU is still better at 4K. Hitman 2 is mostly CPU limited at 1080p, so you can skip those results and we'll move to 1440p. Here the RTX 3080 and 6800 XT are quite evenly matched, with the GeForce GPU winning by a very slim 6% margin. That margin is increased ever so slightly at 4K to 7%, making the RTX 3080 slightly faster in Hitman 2. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is mostly CPU limited at the lower resolutions and pushing past 60 FPS when flying over densely populated areas is extremely difficult. The 6800 XT was 5% faster at 1080p, though we're talking about just 3 FPS more on average. The 3080 then pulled ahead at 1440p to win by a 5% margin and then a much more significant 11% margin at 4K, allowing the GeForce GPU to reach 40 FPS, which did make the game noticeably smoother. Next up we have Borderlands 3, and here the Radeon GPUs perform quite well. The 6800 XT was 7% faster than the 3080 at 1440p, and 8% faster at 1080p. Not massive margins by any means, but a clear win for the 6800 XT here. Once again though, as we reach the 4K resolution, the 3080 catches up, and this time matches the 6800 XT with 66 FPS. 
As we've learnt from recent benchmark videos focusing on Cyberpunk 2077 performance, the GeForce GPUs do have a slight advantage in this title. Still, given that it is sponsored by NVIDIA, I think the performance overall is quite good. For example, the RTX 3080 was just 8% faster at 1440p, though it does get away at 4K, opening up to a rather substantial 18% lead, delivering really what is an entirely different class of performance. Another NVIDIA sponsored title is Control, and here the 3080 was 13% faster at 1440p, which is quite a big performance increase, and as expected this margin only increased at 4K, blowing out to an 18% advantage in NVIDIA's favour. Testing with Red Dead Redemption 2 saw the 6800 XT enjoy a tiny performance advantage at 1080p, though it did slip a few frames behind at 1440p, but I'd call what we're looking at here to be a tie. That said, the 3080 comes to life at 4K, beating the 6800 XT by a convincing 15% margin, which I consider to be sort of next tier performance. The Outer Worlds has been built upon the Unreal 4 engine, which typically favours NVIDIA hardware, so it comes as a little surprise to see that the RTX 3080 pulls well ahead of the 6800 XT, even at 1080p. At 1440p, the GeForce GPU was 15% faster, and that margin blew out to a whopping 21% at 4K, giving NVIDIA a significant performance advantage in this title. There are plenty of new AMD-sponsored games as well, and one such game is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. AMD's investment has paid off here. The 6800 XT was 31% faster at 1080p, 21% faster at 1440p, and still 11% faster at 4K, so a clear performance advantage for the Radeon GPUs. F1 2020 is actually an NVIDIA Gameworks title, but it's always run very well on AMD hardware, and here we can see the 6800 XT offering slightly more frames at 1080p and 1440p, though we're only talking about a mere 6% performance advantage at 1440p. Still at 4K performance is much the same, so overall a good title for the 6800 XT. The second last game we're going to look at is Monster Hunter World, and the RTX 3080 performs exceptionally well in this title. Even at 1080p, it was 10% faster than the 6800 XT, 11% faster at 1440p, and 20% faster at 4K. Last up, we're going to take a look at the Doom Eternal results, and while the margins here are probably meaningless given that we're talking about well over 150 FPS even at 4K, let's quickly go over the results anyway. The 6800 XT was a mere 3% faster at 1080p, with 412 FPS on average, and then just a percent faster at 1440p. So basically identical performance at both resolutions. And then finally, the 3080 takes charge at 4K to win by an 11% margin. But again, the frame rates, even at 4K, are still very high. Okay, so that's a close look at 12 of the 30 games tested. And for the most part, I think it's fair to say the Radeon RX 6800 XT and GeForce RTX 3080 looked very competitive at 1440p, while the GeForce GPU appeared more dominant at 4K. So let's move on to see they compared across all the games tested. Starting with the 1440p data, we see that these GPUs are indeed very even at 1440p, and at most the 6800 XT was up to 20% faster, but we also saw a few instances where it was 13-17% to 17 slower. But for half of the games tested, the margin was 5% or less, which we always deem a draw, and there were just 11 games where the margin was 10% or greater in either direction. Things do become more clear at 4K though. Here the 6800 XT was on average 6% slower, and we're looking at just a few titles where the Radeon GPU came out on top, most of which are AMD sponsored titles, so no surprises there. This time there was 14 games where the 6800 XT was slower by a 10% margin or greater, making the RTX 3080 the superior choice for 4K gaming. Now before we continue, I just wanted to look back at the margins seen in my day one Radeon RX 6800 XT review, because there the Radeon GPU was 3% faster than the RTX 3080 at 1440p and 5% slower at 4K. Now, many of you might be thinking, okay, well that's basically what you found here when testing with 30 games, and you'd be right. But I know through past interactions, this small discrepancy will cause concern for some people, so let's quickly address it by removing the games that we didn't test with previously when using the Ryzen 9 3950X test system. Using the games I previously tested, we see that the 6800 XT is indeed 3% faster at 1440p, a negligible difference that really shouldn't shape your buying decision as 3% is the difference between 60 and 62 FPS, but that should help explain the differences in the results between this content and the day one review. It's the same story at 4K. The 6800 XT was 6% slower in this 30 game benchmark, but only 3% slower in the day one review. Again, this is due to the sample size of games used for testing. 
Okay, so we've now got a very good idea of how the Radeon RX 6800 XT and GeForce RTX 3080 compare across a huge number of games. Now the question is, which one should you buy? Once availability improves, of course. We're now two months from the initial release of AMD's Radeon RX 6800 series, and back in late November, they did assure Tim and myself that within four to eight weeks, it would be possible to purchase AIB cards at the suggested retail price, or the MSRP, so $580 US for the RX 6800 and $650 US for the RX 6800 XT. Obviously that hasn't happened and really availability has become the bigger issue here, though we are aware that the lack of availability has driven up pricing. Anyway, the point is major PC part retailers such as Newegg.com list their cheapest RX 6800 graphics card at $680 US with the cheapest AIB 6800 XT more like $850 US. So both are grossly overpriced and, well, both are out of stock. Therefore, I feel it's now time to call it. AMD failed to deliver and they failed on the promises they made to us two months ago now. I've heard there's virtually no supply of 6800 series GPUs coming in and the situation is even worse than the one presented by NVIDIA. At least there are RTX 3080 IB models listed at the MSRP, even if they are out of stock. Uh, whereas the 6800 XTs appear to be at least $200 US over the MSRP, there are a number of 3080s priced within $100 of the MSRP. So supply and pricing on NVIDIA's end does appear much better, though still a very dire situation. Frankly, the 6800 XT just isn't worth $850 US, and you absolutely should not pay that much for one. In fact, I'd rather spend $150 US on something like a secondhand RX 570 and play some older games, maybe some competitive titles on low quality settings. Just do that to wait it out. So that's the situation right now, but what about the future where both the RTX 3080 and 6800 XT are available at the MSRP? I know you kind of have to bear with me on that one, but if that was the situation, which one would be better value? In terms of cost per frame, they're both very similar. So things like the more mature ray tracing support and DLSS might make the RTX 3080 more appealing to you. Again, depending on your preferences there. Also, if you're into streaming and wish to use your GPU for all the heavy lifting, then right now the RTX 3080 is the obvious choice given AMD's poor encoding support. And as I've mentioned many times before, this is something they really should have addressed by this point, especially if they want to charge top dollar for their GPUs. The key advantage of the 6800 XT is that larger VRAM buffer. Though for now at least, the RTX 3080 appears to do very well at 4K with just 10 gigabytes of memory, and really, I don't see this being an issue for the GeForce GPU anytime soon. A very different situation to what we see with the RTX 3070, for example. Still, the Radeon GPU is offering 6 GB more. It should cost less, and right now, rasterization performance is very similar. On the other hand, if you care about ray tracing performance right now, the RTX 3080 is a much better option than the 6800 XT. And although I haven't invested the large amount of time it takes to test ray tracing, I have done this in the past with other content, and really all you need to know is in today's games, it's currently a wash. The GeForce GPUs are just much better. But also, as I've said in the past, right now there are very few games where we believe enabling ray tracing makes sense. Games such as Control, Watch Dogs Legion, Cyberpunk 2077, and Minecraft. But beyond that, we don't see it as being a feature that you'd want to use in a Fortnite style game. Call of Duty or Battlefield 5, for example, it's just not well suited to fast paced shooters. Having said that, support for DLSS is better in our opinion, as you'll almost always want to enable DLSS 2.0 in any game that supports it. So this is something you'd likely enable in Fortnite, for example. That said, DLSS would be easier to test if it was an option you could just toggle on and it would work with all your games. Obviously, that isn't the case. And because the support is limited and the effectiveness and image quality is game dependent, you can't really make any generalized conclusions about DLSS. Also, how useful DLSS is isn't just game dependent, but also resolution dependent, and this makes providing benchmark numbers a lot more difficult. Typically, we've seen a lot of reviewers who are evaluating DLSS in games like Cyberpunk 2077 do so using an RTX 3080 at 4K, and this is by far the best way to showcase the technology. As you lower the resolution, even to 1440p, the image becomes slightly blurrier as DLSS has less data to work with. And at 1080p, even in Cyberpunk 2077, the quality DLSS option isn't that great in our opinion and noticeably worse than native 1080p. I have seen some NVIDIA fans get quite upset with our opinion on this and say that's not the case, but we've seen this with our own eyes 
and a good many of you have confirmed our findings. So showing DLSS FPS performance in a game like Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p, 1440p and 4K while using the 4K resolution for image quality comparisons can be a little misleading as the quality can and often does vary quite a bit between the various resolutions, becoming softer at the lower resolutions. All that said, DLSS is a very strong selling point of the Ampere GPUs and it's something that AMD does absolutely need to counter. So if you believe that you'll be primarily playing games that do support DLSS, then I personally feel the RTX 3080 will be the better choice. And this technology does help alleviate some of the VRAM restrictions as well. As for AMD technology such as smart access memory, I've dedicated an entire video looking at this and despite some controversy, the majority of you appear to agree that until the technology is universally supported and enabled by default, we shouldn't test with it enabled unless specified for a specific set of tests for example. Although SAM can be enabled for all games, only some games see a noteworthy performance uplift while many see little to no improvement and some even see a performance decline. As a result, with SAM enabled, the 6800 XT's average performance will only be improved by 3%, so not enough to change our conclusion in any meaningful way. Also, enabling DLSS in the titles that support it would lead to a very similar change in the overall performance, as not all titles support this technology, and the ones that do show gains anywhere from 8% right up to 50%. As a side note, I didn't include any overclocking data here as I find those numbers can often be quite misleading. Generally though, it does appear that you will see slightly bigger performance boost through overclocking with an RX 6800 XT, but that's also entirely silicon dependent. So your mileage may vary here, which is why I haven't pushed the overclocking angle. In short, new technologies such as ray tracing and DLSS make it harder than ever to make a concise GPU recommendation, but hopefully the testing here has helped you narrow down your choice between the GeForce RTX 3080 and Radeon RX 6800 XT. And if it did, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe for more content from us. And if you'd like to become a Harbor Unbox community member, then you can join us over on Floatplane or Patreon. The links for those are in the video description. You will get access to monthly live streams that Tim and myself do for Harbor Unbox members. We have Q and A's, behind the scenes videos, a Discord chat, a lot of cool stuff there. So check it out if you're interested. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.